Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another webinar Wednesday. Every time we meet, we focus on a different topic related to PLUS. And today we're going to talk about just getting started with PLUS. We thought this would be appropriate because on Monday, October 31st, just two days ago, Release 4 went live and brought in the rest of what we call the core components into the PLUS system. So the introduction of a whole lot of new records and some functionality. So we're going to do a broad general overview today to help you get started and see what is now in the PLUS system. But before we get started, let's go ahead and begin with a quick technical orientation. Make sure everyone can participate fully and ask your questions throughout the session today. So the webinar has started. You should be able to hear me just fine. If you're having any issues, please check your internet connection. You can also sign out and sign in again. This session is scheduled to go until 1215 today. So plenty of time to make some adjustments as needed. You'll also notice that all participants have been muted for the session. So the preferred way for you to send us your questions and comments is gonna be through the chat. So if you are joining from a computer, you're gonna see something like what's pictured here on the left-hand side. And near the bottom of that, what we call the control panel, is the section where you can type in your questions and comments and send them to us. If you are joining from a mobile device, you will see a question mark icon that will allow you to send your questions and comments. So if you could try to locate that right now and send us a message, just say good morning or hello, just so we know you were able to find that and you can send us your questions. So thank you so much. I'm seeing those come through. Appreciate that. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is another good place to mention that the questions and comments are private. So if you're looking around on your screen and you can't see what I'm talking about, um, only the presenters, the staff are able to see these questions and comments. So this helps us if you have a very specific question that might not apply to the whole group, you can send that as well and we can follow up with you individually. Or if you bring up a question that we think would apply to the group at large and we have time to address it during the session, we will certainly do that. So thank you all again for testing that out. And please feel free to send questions and comments all throughout the session today. Another thing I want to make you aware of is there is a quick reference guide that we're sharing with the session today. We've shared this previously in other webinars. The information is pretty much the same and plus is pretty much the same. It's just that there's new content and some new functionality we're going to be pointing out today as well. So let me go ahead and show you where you can find that. So the same place we were looking before where you found your questions, um, on the control panel, there's a section that says handouts. You'll be able to download the handout from there. And on the app, there is also an icon that says handout. It looks like a small piece of paper. Now, if you can't find this or you're having technical issues, we will also email this at the end of the session. So not to worry about that at all. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned in the beginning, our topic today is getting started with PLUS. We thought this would be appropriate for today because Release 4 went live on Monday, October 31st, just two days ago. And we are so excited to have reached this point and share all this content with you. And that's what our main focus is going to be on today. So if you've never joined a webinar before, my name is Rachel Martin. I'm a training specialist that works with the PLUS project, and I'll be facilitating our discussion today. I know that you all have a lot of questions, and I already see those coming in. So I'm going to give an overview of some general information. Hopefully, that will address some of your questions. For things that are more specific, please do note that your questions and comments come through to us and we get a record of all of those associated with your name and email address. So we will be able to follow up with you after the session if we run out of time today. So we'll make sure to do that and be diligent and send out information to the whole group um, in a follow-up email as well as it relates. 
All right, so let's go ahead and um, today what we're generally going to do, I'll give you some basic information. What is PLUS? A little bit of background knowledge there. We'll spend a lot of time showing you how to navigate the site, where you can find different information that you may be interested in. And then we're also going to share a number of additional resources, um, different FAQs and videos and how-to guides that will help you get started answering some of your more basic questions. So let's go ahead and jump into our topic today. We'll just start with what is PLUS? So if you're brand new, two plus and you're really not sure you haven't gotten started yet essentially plus stands for the planning and land use system and the idea behind creating plus was to make a centralized platform where our customers could create and submit applications pay fees track status make changes to their applications and upload plans and documents to their applications as well um, so what makes this really convenient is that all of the agencies listed here are participating in the plus platform so that means from your one plus login you can create and submit applications and pay fees and track your status and upload plans and documents with all of these various agencies listed here so um, gone are the days of multiple logins and different legacy systems. Everything is going to be done under PLUS moving forward with these particular agencies. So just to talk a little bit more about that, as you can imagine, this has been a huge project for Fairfax County because between those various agencies, they were using um, over 20 legacy systems and all of those systems have now been brought under this plus umbrella. And between those systems, we were also looking at over 200 different record types that also have now been brought under this plus umbrella. So this huge project, um, what really made the most sense for a project of this magnitude is to approach it with a multi-year rollout of what we call the core components. So you can also think of that as a release. So what that essentially means is in October of 2020, we had the very first release of PLUS, which made the PLUS platform available through the Fairfax County website um, with some limited content and functionality. And every release since then, new content and new functionality has been added to the system. And so release four just went live on October 31st. And this brought in the remaining what we call records and some new functionality to the system. So all of those core components are now live and active for our customers and our staff to access. So let's go ahead and um, talk about one more detail that is what is a record? So I get this question a lot. I wanna make sure everyone understands because then the demonstration is gonna make a lot more sense if we're all on the same page about a record. So Record is the general term we use to describe an application or a permit. Um, so what you previously may have thought of as a permit in FIDO or an application, um, all of that is now the general term of record is used to describe an application or a permit. And that's because we have lots of different agencies participating in PLUS and not every single application is going to result in a permit. Um, some may have a different purpose or function. So record is just a nice general term. Um, but we sometimes have people that will use that interchangeably with application or permit. So just not to get confused when we're talking about a record, we are essentially talking about what you might think of as a permit. So that is what we're talking about there. So with the rest of the time we have today, we're really going to focus on a demonstration and show you plus and show you where you can find different things in the system. So we'll begin with just how you access plus. We'll take a look at your customer dashboard, what's available to you there. We'll look at the various module tabs um, that you'll see across the top, because this is how information is really organized in PLUS. 
We'll show you where you can find applications and, and begin them and submit them. We'll also take a look at the record summary. So if you want more details on a specific record or you want to take action on a specific record, um, a lot of those, a lot of that will be done through what we call the record summary or the record details. So we'll show you how to open that and how to find those features. And we will briefly touch on searching in plus but searching in plus is really a whole nother topic we could spend an entire webinar on and in fact we have done that so we do have recorded sessions that you can go back and watch that are all about searching in plus so let's go ahead and get started with our sessions today and i do see a lot of questions coming in and our staff are responding to these as best they can as they come up so remember, we will also do our best to respond to you. If we don't address it during the session, we will get to you after the session with an email. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my next screen. Hopefully everyone can now see this. And what I wanna get started with today is, um, this is called the PLUS support site. So we're going to share this in the chat if you want to go ahead and open up this site and follow along with us. But through this PLUS support site, you can see this is through the Fairfax County website. And this is really a centralized place where we try to collect all resources that we have created for customers about PLUS. So when you're looking at this, you can see we have relevant links over here where you can access the PLUS portal itself. You can register for our upcoming webinar Wednesdays. There's also this link here that I wanna make sure you see. It says stay connected. If you click that, it's gonna direct you to this area of our website where you can enter your email address and subscribe. And anytime PLUS gets a new update or alert, if there's maintenance happening on the site or anything like that, you will receive an email directly from the PLUS team letting you know that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and scroll back up to the top of the page. And then on this side, you're going to see plus support. This is where we put our how to videos, our user guides, our FAQs. There's a contact us section where you can get contact information to general plus support, as well as all the various agencies that are using plus moving forward. So a lot of really great information here. So I always like to show this first because as we're getting started with PLUS, there are already a lot of really wonderful resources that exist to try to help support you through this process. So please do take a look at that. And what I'm gonna do now is just scroll down a little bit here. And what you're gonna see here is um, an area where you can go ahead and launch PLUS. So this is another reason I would recommend bookmarking this support site because from this support site, you can directly access PLUS as well and you'll get additional resources. So it's a really great place to have saved in your browser and access PLUS through this site. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch PLUS. And what this does is it opens the PLUS site and you'll see that there is a message across the top here. If you are an LDS site and building customer, this would be related to anything that you had that was potentially in flight and project docs and what that's gonna look like in PLUS moving forward. So if you're having any issues with that, there's information here and a couple different links that you are directed to for more information. So just wanna show you what that is. That's not always gonna be there. Um, but anytime you're in a new site, a really good idea is just to take a look around at your different links and, and buttons so that you can kind of understand what you're looking at. Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna transfer over to what's called the training environment. And you can see this is a training environment written across the top. So you will not see that when you're logged in because you should be in production. So this is what production will look like to you as the customer. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I am going to use the training environment 
so that I do not share anyone's personal information through this webinar and I don't submit any applications to our staff who are actively reviewing your applications. So I'm gonna just stay here in training, but it is identical to production. So you'll be able to see all the same things. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is just kind of talk through what we're looking at. So on PLUS, you're gonna see these module tabs across the top for every single agency participating in the PLUS platform. You'll see a global search feature in the upper right hand corner. You can use this to search an old FIDO number or um, pause record number, any record numbers or permit numbers that you may have from a previous system, you can type them directly in here and search to pull up the details of that record. You can also search things like a parcel ID or an address um, to just search the system and find information related to your key terms. Across the top, you're gonna to see an area where you can register for an account. And right under your login field, you're also gonna see another link to register for an account. Now you are not going to be able to, uh, I'm not gonna be able to show you right now how to register for an account, but we do have several resources, including some how-to videos that will walk you through that process. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and log in there are certain things you can do in PLUS without logging in, but for the purposes of the demonstration today, I'm going to log in because a lot of the things, a lot of the questions we've been getting the past couple days um, relate to things like uh, how do I schedule an inspection or upload documents or pay fees. And some of those things you can do without logging in, but some of them you cannot. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in so we have full access to everything in the PLUS site. And so what you're gonna see when you log in is you will see your name across the top and you are currently in the home tab. So the home tab is where you are automatically directed to what's called your dashboard. And this is where you'll see a cart, you'll see an area that says collections where you can create your own folders to save records that you wanna access easily in the future. And at the bottom, you'll see a work in progress section. So anything that you, um, any application you have started, but you have not submitted, you can save your applications at any time and they will save along the bottom here. And then you'll be able to resume the application and continue that application. So if you reach a point in your application where you have a question, you're not sure how to proceed, you can always save it, contact our customer support and continue when you're ready. So just making you aware. Now, another thing I wanna make you aware of from that home tab is this My Records button right here. So the My Records button is where you will see any applications that you have active in the PLUS system. And this would include any of your applications from your previous legacy systems that have been linked to your PLUS account and brought over. Now I'm seeing a lot of questions in the chat of people saying, I'm not seeing my applications from FIDO. So there were specific directions that were sent out to our building customers um, how to create their account and link their FIDO records to their PLUS account. If you did that and it did not work or you never received those instructions, please do reach out to our customer support team. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull up that customer support. Again, that's from the, the plus support that I shared, the contact us. Um, this is where you'll have all of that contact information and the plus, the general plus support line is right here. It's at 703-324. 2222. You can call that number and we can help get you connected to what you need. If you prefer, you can also email this email address right here with your information and we can address you that way as well. So there are plenty of people who have needed assistance with this and we are able to help you with that. So please do let us know. 
what your particular issue is and we'll follow up as quickly as we can. All right, so I'm gonna return back to my um, PLUS training environment where I'm performing my demonstration. I'm in the home tab and right now I have clicked my records. And what you're gonna see is there will be a header for every single agency where you have active records. So this would be where you would, so if you open building, for example, this is where you would see your FIDO records if they were brought over appropriately. So if you're not seeing them there, that's when you could contact us and let us know. And the same for other legacy systems as well. So what you would do is you can click on any of these headers and see all of the applications that you have with that particular agency. Now I have a number of applications. I've been doing training um, for the past couple months for various agencies. So I have a lot going on here. Um, but what I wanna show you, I'm gonna open up this building one again, is when you open this up, it organizes it in a table for you. So you can see the date it was submitted, you can see the record number, the record type, the address, the project name, the status, and the action over here. Now, one thing I wanna highlight for you is any place you see a blue hyperlink. So you can see that the record numbers are hyperlinks. And under here, under action, I have some blue hyperlinks as well. These are places where you can click to either see additional information on the record. So if I were to click this link right here, that would open up what we call that record summary page, where we can see all the information about this record. We can schedule inspections, we can pay fees. I also have a few links in the action column that will allow me to do things like you can see this one, for example, has upload plans and make changes. This one below also gives me a pay fees due link. So you'll have links under the action column that directly relate to the type of application it is and where you are in the process of the application. So that's a little bit about how these records are organized in a table, how you can check the current status of your record. So this is where you'll go to get that at a glance information. And this is where you'll go to see any existing legacy records that have been brought into PLUS. Now, another thing I wanna show you is some more hyperlinks you're gonna see are add to collection and add to cart. So this refers to what we saw on the dashboard earlier. So if I go to a record where I have the pay fees due link, I can select that checkbox and you can see I have it for this one as well. And then I can select add to cart. And I'm gonna get a confirmation that says your selection has been added to the cart. Now I can also go down to the site tab because I know I have some records waiting for payment here and I see I have pay fees due. I can go ahead and select this one as well and add to cart and I'll get that same confirmation text. And then I can return to my dashboard and now in the cart, I should see those three records and those three fees from those three records pulled into my cart and gives me a grand total that I can now go ahead and click this view cart and process that payment in one transaction. So in this way, you can pay multiple fees across different records and even across different agencies in one transaction. So I wanted to show you that because that is a really useful feature and just show you a little bit about how that can be a benefit to you. All right, so let me go ahead back to my records now. And it's just gonna take a little minute to process here, but the next thing I wanna show you is the same way that we can select different checkboxes and say add to cart. I can also select checkboxes um, as many as I want from various agencies, and I can click this add to collection. And that is what's gonna allow me to either put these records in an existing folder, 
or create a new folder that will show up on my dashboard. So in this example, you can see I have over 100 building records. And as you're in plus um, for many months or years even, you might be in the same situation and creating folders for records that you wanna see right away could be a really useful way to organize and make information easily accessible to you. So that's just a little bit about those features, but I know we're already just at the 20 minute mark for the time we have remaining. So what I'd like to do is go down to the zoning tab here and open one of my zoning records. And I'm gonna do that by clicking this record number hyperlink. Now remember what I was telling you earlier is from the My Records, this is really your information at a glance. You can see everything you have in here and just some basic information. But if you want the details, you need to click the hyperlink under record number, and that's going to open what we call the record summary or sometimes referred to as the record details. So regardless of the agency and the record type, um, it's going to be organized in a really similar way. So you're going to see the record number across the top. You'll also see the agency tab highlighted here um, for whatever record this, this belongs to. You'll see the title of the record as well. You'll have the type here. This is a rezoning record and the status. Additionally, you'll see the work location with the map view. You'll see some record details. You can click more details down here. So there's a lot of information that you can get from just this view. But another thing to be aware of that a lot of people miss is that right underneath where you have the record status submitted, you have a number of drop down arrows that give you more options. So under record info, this is where you're going to see inspections. So if you want to schedule an inspection related to a record, you can open the record summary, go to record info, go to inspections, and then this part at the bottom will change and you get that link to schedule or request an inspection. Now, every agency and every record type could be slightly different. And depending on where you are in the process of the application, you may or may not be able to schedule an inspection yet. So remember, if you have questions about how you schedule an inspection, you're not seeing that information here where I'm showing you right now, you can always contact the agency directly from our PLUS support information. So if it's zoning, you would wanna contact them directly to say, hey, I have this application, I'm trying to schedule an inspection, it's not letting me, or I'm getting this error message. Um, these are the very best numbers to reach out to to get those types of questions answered. So going back to PLUS from record info, you're also gonna see something that says attachments. So attachments is where you can view all of the documents that have been uploaded to this particular record. And this would also include things like permits or staff reports. So you're gonna see all documents related to this record from this attachment link. And again, that was under record info attachments. Now, if you are logged in and this is your record, you may also see an add button here that will allow you to upload additional documents to your record. If you are not logged in or you are not a contact on the record, you will not see this add button. And depending on the record, not all of these attachments are made available to the public from a research point of view. So for example, there are gonna be um, some attachments in building that are not, uh, you're not able to see them just as a member of the general public. So just to kind of make you aware that if you are logged in, which you can see I am logged in because it says you're logged in as Rachel Martin here. I'm logged in, this is my record. I can see all the attachments and the add button. But what you see is going to depend on several factors. So just keep that in mind as you're clicking around. 
Now, another thing you'll see up here is payments. You can also access payments and pay fees here. And then another thing I wanna highlight is this new tab that this has been a part of the release for functionality. This is the plan room. So if this is a record that utilizes what we call the digital plan room, it's a record where you would need to upload plans and documents to be reviewed um, by our plan reviewers, you will see this plan room tab and you will be able to use these options here to begin the process of uploading, to look at issues, conditions, and notes, to access your approved plan sets. So really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and click uploads just to show you what that looks like. So when you select the plan room and you do uploads, you can see your view has changed a little bit. You have, you're now in the digital plan room and you have these tabs going across horizontally. And this uploads tab is where you have the ability to begin the process of uploading plans and documents to your record. So if you click resume, it's going to open up a four step process of submitting your required documents um, to the digital plan room two plus through this process. Now, I'm not going to have time to walk through this process today. I just wanted to make you aware of where it was and what that is. In our next webinar Wednesday, this is the topic. We're going to be walking through this four-step process of how to upload your documents and plans into PLUS. So right now, if I want to return to my record details, I can do that by clicking right here, record details, and that's going to return me to the screen we were on previously, where I have my record number along the top, I have this record info drop down, I have the plan room drop down, I have the payments. So there's a lot of information that I can access from these particular details. You're also going to see that I can add to cart and add to collection from here, just like we could do from the home tab from my records. So a lot of the information you will want to access is right here in these record details. Now, if you're in a situation where you are not seeing certain applications. So maybe you had a permit in FIDO and it's not yet brought over to your PLUS account. You can also use this global search at the top and type in that FIDO permit number and search it to open up these record details. And then you'll be able to do things like schedule an inspection or pay fees. So that is another way you can access that information, even if it is not linked to your account at this time. All right, now before we run out of time, I do want to show you one last thing, which is how to access those applications and submit new applications in PLUS. So if, for example, you want to submit an application with building, you would click the building module tab and you're going to see right under building, it says create an application. So you would click this link and it's gonna direct you to a place where you need to read and accept the terms and then you can continue. And from this screen, it's going to show you several categories. And sometimes we find people get stuck here, but notice these are drop down categories. So you can click any of these to see the additional options of the various applications that are now available to you after this release that went live on Monday. So when you see an application that you would like to proceed with, you would click the circle and you can move to this button here, continue application. Now, another thing you can do is use this search at the top. So if you have a lot of options, like you can see there's a lot of different applications now that are live to our customers. You can also type in a key term 
and it'll give you any matching results here and that might help you find it a little bit faster so then you can select the one you want and you can continue the application now we're not going to have time to go through the entire application, but I just wanna give you an idea of what this looks like. So when you select an application and you get started, the name of the application will appear at the top and you'll also have a step tracker along the top that will show you the various steps that need to be completed as you go through the process of submitting this application. So right now we're in step one where we're entering our location and people data. And you can see that occasionally in plus, uh, there are fields that are marked with a red asterisk. This means that it's a required field. And in the case of address, you can see there's a search button instead of a save or submit button. So what this means is there are many places in plus where plus is communicating with a different database to help pull the most accurate and up-to-date information for you. So when you see this, make sure what our recommendation is to type in partial street number and partial street name, and you can see nowhere else are there any red asterisks. So all you have to give plus is a street number and street name. We'd recommend giving a partial one just to avoid any typos that you might accidentally put in and then click search. Let plus do the work for you. And once you do that, plus is gonna tell you what matches that criteria. You can select the best match It'll give you the associated parcel and owner and you click select and it's going to auto populate your application with that information. Now you can also see areas on the application where you may have questions related to the application. So are you the property owner is the displayed information correct and from here you can save and resume later and it'll go in your dashboard to the work in progress and you can pick it up at any time or you can continue the application so if we continue the application you'll see that it just takes me to the next page of information i can follow the steps and enter all of the required information until i'm able to submit this so that's about as far as I'm gonna to go today, but I wanted to give you a little glimpse of what that looks like. Um, this is the same process you will follow for every single agency. So environmental health, same idea. You're gonna have that create an application button. You would accept the terms and conditions, continue. And from here, you're going to see a number of categories and all the various application types here. So this is the same process for every single agency. You click the agency tab. So in this case, I clicked buyer. You're going to see create an application. You would go ahead. I have read and accepted the terms. And then you will be able to see the categories with the various options available to you. So this is how you find the applications for each individual agency. And again, with release four on October 31st, all of our core components are now live in plus. So any applications you could not find previously, you should be able to find now. Now, if you have any questions that are specific to an agency or a business process, like how do I, apply for this type of application if you're not seeing it in these tabs or it's asking for this information what is that i don't understand what that is remember that the best place to go for those types of questions is to our plus support page where we have listed all the individual phone numbers and emails for each agency so you can ask those business process specific questions and you could also contact our general line if you have issues that are more related to the way your account was set up, if you're not seeing your FIDO records, if you need to change something on your account, um, that's the best place to go for that. 
So I've seen a lot, a lot of questions come in and I see that Alana is doing her best to respond to those as quickly as she can. Alana, is there anything that I should address now with the couple minutes we have left? Um, there were a couple questions about inspections and scheduling inspections. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's return to inspections and talk about this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is from my home tab, I'm going to go back to my records. And this is going to list all of the records that I have active in plus across all my various agencies. So I can go to the agency where my record would be housed. So I'll go to building here and then I can find the record. Maybe it's this one that I want to go ahead and schedule this inspection. I would click this record number here. And this again is gonna open that full record summary where I have these dropdowns right underneath the record status. I can go to record info and inspections. And this is gonna give me that link that says schedule or request an inspection. Now, depending on the agency, you do not necessarily have to be a contact on the account or even logged into PLUS um, to go ahead and schedule that inspection. So uh, that way, oh, I'm sorry. So when you click that schedule of requested inspection, you'll get a list of all the different possible inspection types. You can select the one that you want to schedule, click continue. And from here, you'll be given a list of the available dates you'll see the available dates are in blue you can select the date that you want um, for building it's typically an all day option you're not given the ability to select a specific time frame and then you would continue from there and fill out the required information Um, so I see someone saying they've been trying to schedule an inspection they're not able to so I see, and that all day, so thank you Colleen for that question. Um, we did have a glitch in the system where some people were not able to see this all day selection or you could see it, but you couldn't select it. I believe that has now been resolved. So if you're logging in and it's still not working for you, please do contact us at Plus Support and we can look into that for you and we can help you get your inspection scheduled. All right, so that is generally scheduling inspection, but do remember that every agency is gonna be a little bit different because there are some inspections that the preference in the business process is still gonna be to call the office and schedule the inspection because it's gonna be really specific set of circumstances. So for example, a lot of the fire installation inspections would still be ones where you would want to call the office. So again, with those kind of questions, if you're not seeing the option to schedule through ACA, it's possible that the preferred method is to call the office. That's usually gonna be communicated to you through an automated email um, to let you know that you can schedule an inspection and here are the directions on how to do that. Rachel, uh, quick question. Oops. Yeah. Um, does the customer need to wait to pay fees? Previously, they could pay and schedule inspections immediately. Is there a wait on issuance? So it depends on the application type. I know we got a lot of questions yesterday about the building trades applications and specifically so mechanical and plumbing i know that was the process in fido that business process has changed now so it's not an immediate issuance of a permit or paying the fees there is a review process now um, unfortunately that's about as much as i can tell you about it i don't want to give anyone wrong information i don't know all of the details related to that so what i would absolutely recommend is you reach out to land development services this customer service number here um, they've been incredibly responsive to calls of course you know we've been getting quite a lot of calls 
over the past couple days, but they've been really responsive and they can help walk you through those specific business process questions. Another thing that I will be sharing with you all is there is um, LDS has one-on-one -on -one customer support sessions that you can sign up for. You can do them virtually or in person. So you can sit with a staff member and they'll walk you through a lot of these processes uh, related to LDS and the building and site application. So I will send that out in the follow-up email after this webinar so you can access that and that might be a really great way to get your specific questions answered. Okay, any other questions we want to address now? I know we're just at about that 1215 mark. Okay, so we'll go ahead and wrap up here, but remember, I see a lot of questions in here. I see that Alana has responded to a lot of these, but what we will do is I'm gonna go through these after the webinar. I'm gonna type up a summary of questions and answers and include that in the email that goes out. If there's anything really specific to you as an individual, we will respond to you. Um, and follow up with you specifically. So what I'd like to do now is before we wrap up, I just wanna let you know what you can expect next, what's gonna happen after we close up this webinar. So you will receive an email with links and a handout and you will get this by the end of the day today. And what that's gonna include is a link to the PLUS site specifically so you can get started. It will also have a link to that support site that we keep referencing with all of the other resources for you. We also have on that support site, our YouTube channel where we have a number of videos that are targeted to specific things you would like to do in PLUS. So how to look at attachments, how to schedule inspections, how to pay fees. We have videos that cover all of those steps. So that could also be a good place to start. I saw this question come up quite a few times. All of our webinar Wednesdays are recorded and we do post them. You can access them through our PLUS support site and we will also give you a direct link for those as well in the email that's gonna go out by the end of the day. We will also include links to register for our upcoming sessions. We have two coming up in November that are going to be dedicated to the process of uploading plans and documents and then responding to feedback on those plans and documents and uploading revisions. So believe me, we really understand that there are so many questions. There's a lot of new things that are happening with PLUS and we will get to your questions. We will address you. We'll make sure we support you and get you through this process of change because it is a lot. It's a lot for our staff. It's a lot for you as our customers. So we want to make sure we address your specific questions. We appreciate your patience through this process. I know some of you have mentioned you're having a hard time getting through on our customer support lines. You can also email us. We are all actively reviewing those throughout the day. Um, when you close this webinar, you will get a survey. I would ask that you fill that out because there's one area on there where you have a free form response. You can let us know if you wanna see a webinar on a specific topic that maybe will focus on different information that I wasn't able to cover today. I know these are short sessions. We're just trying to give general overviews to help get you started, but we can absolutely target some sessions to something more specific to try to support you. So thank you again, everyone, for your patience. I'm going to switch the screen to our support numbers again so that you can have those up on the screen. And I'm going to enlarge this so that I will just keep these up as we're closing out the webinar today. If you want to grab any of these numbers or email addresses, I'm going to leave this up for a while. Um, but we are so excited that Release 4 went live on Monday, and we know it's going to be a process, but we are really looking forward to moving forward with all of you through this process and um, all the efficiency that it will hopefully bring to your projects. I know we're 
running into some issues here and there, but we will address those as quickly as we can and get you the support you need. So please do reach out to us at these various phone numbers and email addresses, and we will follow up with you as quickly as we can. And I will also review all of your questions from this webinar session today. So thank you all so much for your time and uh, your attention today. I'll be following up with you shortly. By the end of the day, you'll get that email with all the information. And please let us know if there's anything else we can do to get you started with PLUS. So thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day. And we look forward to connecting with you soon and helping you get started with PLUS. Have a great day, everyone.